So in this video, we're going to talk about making a NuGet package for a .NET framework um, project instead of a .NET Core. In case you're not up to .NET Core yet, and you, you know you want to still publish NuGet packages. So for this, I'm just literally going to make a class framework, a class library for the .NET framework. So there's going to be nothing in it. It's the point of it isn't the code. Um, so we'll just get this project and make sure it builds successfully, which it does. Uh, now let's say this is your project that you want to submit to NuGet, so you've got a NuGet package. First thing you want to do really is open the assembly info, or right click and go properties uh, and assembly info, and it's the same kind of details, whichever way you want to do it. Uh, you want to set up in here your title description, so my test NuGet, uh, and then you've got your class library there, so this would be my product name. Um, then company, so just put your company if you've got one, and then the assembly product. So again, this would be in this case my test product. Copyrights in there, and then that's about it. And then your version here. So they're kind of the the key bits of info to set up. If you then look in properties assembly info, you'll also see it's, it's basically filled out there. So that's all your details. Uh, set up. Obviously, when you're publishing to NuGet, you want to be in release. Now, when you're using the old NuGet, it doesn't pick up this setting. All it's going to look at is if you right click on your project and unload, right click again and edit, it's going to pick up on what is this default configuration here. So that the property configuration, uh, if it's blank, meaning there isn't one, which there won't be when you run NuGet, it's going to try and do debug. So we'll change this bit here to release uh, and then reload the project. And all that means is when we come to run the NuGet executable on it, it will pick release instead of debug, which is you know important. You don't want to push debug. Uh, then in order to now push this project, we can open the folder. And here's the folder that we want to push. Uh, this is our you know project. So if we then open up the internet, go to nougat.org for slash downloads, download nougat.exe and save it. Then if we paste the download into here, so we've got the executable here, uh, we're good with that. Uh, now we want to open up a command line here, so type cmd, so you're in the same folder as the csproj of your solution, and nougat's in here, so we can, we can run nougat. And the one thing you have to do once, um, or when there's any, I guess, major changes to your csproj structure, uh, you type nougat spec, and then the name of the CS proj and press enter. And this will now create this new spec. Open this up in, I'm gonna open it up in Visual Studio Code. And you'll be presented with this generated file. So the ID, the version, all these dollars, all this is gonna pull in from your actual CS proj. The things that won't is these three here, or these four here, um, the copyright and the tags aren't being pulled in. So the tags are searchable terms. So if you're going to push it to NuGet and you want it to be found by uh, you know, SQL magic or something, then you put tags SQL magic, and then you put your own company, your name, and your project name as kind of tags. Uh, so the only thing you really want to change is the license URL, if you have a license. If not, just remove it. In this case, we don't. Project URL could be uh, the GitHub repo. So like, you know, github.com forward slash angel6 forward slash, I don't know, SolidWorks API or something. Uh, same for the icon, we don't have one. Don't have a license to accept. Um, and then a summary of the release notes for this version. So this could be uh, my first test version. And then we save that file. So that's now your new spec edited. And the only time you really need to edit this again uh, is if you come to do a new release and you want to change the release notes. You go into here and change the release notes. Uh, or you want to add some new tags or change that. But pretty much all the time, the only thing you're going to change is release notes. So that's a one-time thing when you do new spec. And it's all it does is generate this file. So you could hand type it if you wanted. Uh, that's not really an issue. Uh, so then we have the project already set as default to release uh, that we did a minute ago. So now all that's left is to... Um, compile this project in release. So we're now ready, it's compiled and good to go. Uh, and then in here, we just do uh, nougat pack. 
and this should attempt to package. You can see here, um, based on there, packing files from release, which is the important step there, and successfully generated package. So now we have a package here uh, that's ready to push. So it's, it's as easy as that, basically. Um, and now we can push that packet um, up to uh, nougat.org. So in the previous video, I showed you how to create an account uh, on Nougat, and then how to sign in and go to your API keys and generate one, which I won't show obviously on the video so that you, you know, you can't see my key. You could manually upload a package uh, or you can push it from command line. So I've got the published packets here um, from, uh, you know, my current two packages basically. So I could push one of these two live, but I don't really want to, to do that. So instead I'll simply uh, show you how to push it live. So you've seen the last video uh, on Nougat packages. It'll be linked in the description of not. That kind of goes through in more detail about creating the Nougat package, getting your API key, and also what happens once you push. So I don't need to re repeat those steps, if you will. So then the only thing left now is to actually push the packet live. So we've got the Nougat in this folder and it's next to the new pack. So what we can tab in here it's basically nougat push, then the name of the nougat package, which is this one, uh, then your API key. So that would be a bunch of you know random numbers like this, uh, and then dash source, and then https colon forward slash forward slash api dot uh, not bugat nougat dot org uh, forward slash v three forward slash index dot json. And we press enter on this and it'll fail because my key's wrong, but it'll attempt to push. Uh, it will then get the packet and it's saying forbidden. Basically the remote access denied, the key's invalid. Uh, so other than now specifying your correct key here and pressing enter, uh, this will then push up live and say successful. And if you want to see that actually happening, you can check out the, you know, the other video I did. That's the only real difference between the two. Uh, so in a .NET one, you use .NET Nougat push and if you're using a you know the old style then you do the actual nougat exe you download and instead you do nougat push uh, and then the syntax is ever so slightly different it's dash source instead of dash s um you know there's, there's very little difference between the two uh, that would then obviously push up live to here you'd see it in here instantly in your account and then it'd say you know this this package isn't currently indexed and then after if it's your very first time pushing a new project then it will take potentially 20 minutes, half an hour. If it's a repeat one and it's simply updated, it typically takes five to 10 minutes to, to appear live and be indexed. Um, so that's all there is to actually generating and pushing a Nougat. Um, again, say you want to then create the next version, uh, then you would go to assembly info and you would change the version to say we're at version 1.1 now. You change these two here Nothing else really changes about that. Uh, we then build the release and we'd open a command line again and we just say nougat pack. Oops, did that one off uh, off camera there. So you do nougat pack and you can see it's generated the, the next package. Um, so that's picked up on the, uh, the next package. And then you do the same again, you do nougat push to push it live. So what you can do is you could all always make a text file called say um, generate um, package and do say dot bat uh, and then that could just be opened with VS code and this could literally say nougat pack as simple as that and if we were to delete those two you could just double click generate package and I'll bring this onto screen you see that opens and generates your package and then you could also make one that's called, say, uh, push package. Um, and what you could do is generate a package, which generates the packet. And then you could drag this onto the push package. Um, and then in here, it would appear as an argument. And you could then type in uh, your nougat push. Um, the package name could be the variable, which I, I can't remember the bat variable, I can do a quick Google, but there's a variable you can pull in, uh, something like dollar uh, one or percentage one, that's the, the argument, so when you drag and drop a file on, uh, in fact, let's just do a quick Google on that, 
uh, and find that out. Uh, so it's um, command line bat get argument. Uh, oh, I keep forgetting I'm doing this off my second monitor at the minute. So let's just take a quick look. Uh, something like percentage one. Oh, it was right in the first place, percentage one. So I'm pretty sure if we were to just do percentage one, and if we just started with, say, echo percentage one, and save that, and we were to, that's probably just going to appear and close straight away. But if we were to drag that on, yeah, it's appeared and closed straight away. So let's just open with that. And I think we can do pause. I think we'll do a, yes, that'll stay open. So if I drag and drop that on now, package and bring this up, uh, you can see it has output the, uh, the path. So we have the full path there. So what we should be able to do with that is to then change this to basically be um, nougat push and then that. And you might want to wrap that in quotes in case the space is in the name. Uh, and then you can do the key and then dash source HTTPS uh, api.nougat.org forward slash, um, what was it now? forward slash v3 forward slash index, I think it was. Not really monitoring for this, but next.json, I believe. Let me just double check. I've got a file with that in. Um, where are we? Drag this off a minute, just get my... Um, oh, v3, yeah, that was right. So we now have this in. So if we were to drag and drop this on, I know the key's wrong, but what we should get is, there we go. Uh, and let's just put a pause back at the end, just so we can see it. Uh, pause. So now if we drag and drop onto this, and I drag it into view, you can see it then starts to try and push the latest packet that we drop on. So you could have a little script like this, and then all you'd have to do is double click generate to generate the current package. And it would generate the nougat. And then you just drag and drop that onto push, which would be, I guess, yeah, it's called push, and you get the output to be pushed. So that's that's one way you can do kind of a nice little um, setup there. Uh, so that's, like I said, that's, that's all there is to generating a packet uh, for a .NET framework um, project instead of a .NET core. Very little difference, but at the same time, it's also important to know uh, how to do that because there are key differences. So hopefully this video was useful. Um, if you want to support what I'm doing, I do have a Patreon page, uh, patreon.com forward slash angel6. That'll be in the description. Uh, as always, you can leave comments and I'll get back to you in the video. Uh, and also, I've just started to move to a new recording software. So you should now see you've got 60 frames per second on this video. So the mouse should be smoother than the last videos if you're using a 60 frame a second video. Um, and I'm going to try and you know improve the quality of these videos to get... Uh, 4k in 60 frames per second so if you enjoy that uh, you know let me know uh, hopefully it's appreciated uh, and i'll see you next time